Hi everyone. So in this video I'm going to talk about the work of Irving Goffman. Goffman was a Canadian social theorist, incredibly influential for his uh, theorizations of ethnographic studies. What he would typically do was go into a particular social setting, observe what people were doing, how they're interacting, and then try to build some theories around it. The technical name for this is ethnomethodology. Goffman's earliest work was focused on the ways that people presented themselves in public and the way they almost performed for each other and the ways that interactions then became kind of scripted and predictable. He was interested in understanding how people learned to play particular roles, how they interacted with each other in particular settings. And this led him to do some influential work on a specific type of organisation. A lot of Goffman's work has been used in organisation theory generally to explore issues of identity and performance, but Goffman did actually have his own ideas about how organisations worked. And specifically, he argued that there was a distinct type of organisation which worked differently to all of us. And this was his interest. He called it the total institution. Put very simply, Goffman's argument was that while most organisations asked for some commitment, they asked for some effort, they asked for some of the labour power, as a Marxist might call it, of their employees, they left the rest to the individual to do what they wanted with. So most organisations, you, know, you turn up nine to five, and then at what happens outside of work is up to you. The organisation stops. And Goffman said this isn't true for all organisations. There are some, which he called total organisations, which take over the whole of their members. For example, healthcare organisations, which people can stay in for days, weeks, years. Prisons, people can stay in for days, weeks and years. And so Goffman tries to theorise some of the unique features of these types of organisations. And he noted that there were some commonalities across all of the examples of total institutions. Firstly, he noted that in almost all total institutions, prisons, hospitals, religious institutions, there's usually two very distinct roles that people play. Either people are treated as inmates, and they're almost like the raw material of the institution. So this is like a, a prisoner or a patient in a hospital or they are staff, and the staff's job is to work on these other people, the inmates. The staff might be prison guards, might be hospital workers, full-time uh, religious pe people, if that's even the right phrase for them. And Goffman said, when you look across these total institutions, even different types of total institutions, you see that staff and inmates often engage in very similar types of interactions. Ostensibly, uh, staff are supposed to be there to help the inmates. They are supposed to care for the inmates. They are supposed to rehabilitate the inmates, whether that's training them to make them more spiritual or make them healthy or reform them to stop them from being criminal. However, a lot of what happens within institutions, Goffman says, is staff essentially trying to rid the inmates of any previous social roles that they had, and he calls this the mortification of the self, the death of the self. So this is what happens when somebody becomes an inmate, they have to unlearn a lot of the social roles and conventions and norms that they learn outside of the institution. And the institution becomes for them a new reality. It is a total system with no outside to it, both physically, symbolically and socially. And stuff, sorry, Goffman said one of the ways this works is through set types of interactions, which he refers to as looping interactions. And um, there's various types of these which he describes, but the, the, the main point is that in each case, staff provoke a particular response from an inmate, and that response is almost like a, 
a game that they can't win. Whatever they do is used to recruit them more and more into the institution. So in a prison, for example, a member of staff might provoke an inmate to uh, be disobedient. They might make outrageous demands on them so that they answer back or act out. And then once they act out or answer back, they can then be punished. And they're then treated as if they needed further control and further direction. So they end up justifying their own behaviour. And Goffman says that this creates a loop which becomes impossible for inmates to get out of, such that more and more of their self, more and more of their thoughts, more and more of their physical bodies become part of the total institution. And there's no escape for the total institution. So this is Goffman's work, very simply put, and he detailed how these processes have particular nuances in particular settings and how these processes manifest themselves in particular types of organisations. And he's interesting as an organisation theorist because he's one of the first people to argue that there are distinct types of organisations. And that doesn't mean organisations which do distinct things, but organisations that work in distinct ways. So his argument is there are total institutions which work differently to other institutions. This is very different from the likes of, say, Herbert Simon, who's trying to provide a description of all organisations. This is very different from the likes of, for example, Carl Weick, who says all organisations work through sense-making. Goffman argues, no, there's types of organisations, and he's interested in this extreme example of the total institution. So hopefully that's interesting, hopefully that's helpful. If you've got any questions, or thoughts or comments um, about my, uh, about this, this short video, leave them below. Bye.